This is David's Candy, which is one of Cliff England's hybrids grown out from David Laverne seed, aka David's Candy Corn. This is a delicious persimmon. It's very upright uh, and it ripens its wood uh, in time here in Massachusetts uh, for winter dormancy. Now, when I talk about wood ripening, what I'm talking about is the process by which the meristems undergo lignification and become fully hardened off. And you need that uh, for winter dormancy because a tree does not obtain its full maximum winter dormancy until it is completely uh, mature. So we have two species that contribute to these hybrids. Um, the first being Diospyros virginiana, the American persimmon. That's a uh, temperate species, has a deep dormancy to about negative 20 or so, uh, presuming you have northern 90 chromosome material. That's another topic. And you have Diospyros khaki, the Asian persimmon, which is subtropical has a hardiness down to about zero or negative five degrees, somewhere in there. The hybrids can be hardy anywhere from zero to negative 20 degrees or so. Um, and this varies depending on the cultivar. So you have to know the, the general hardiness of your cultivar, what its maximum capability is in your climate. And the other consideration is your latitude, your position on the globe, because this dictates how long of a summer season you will have. And you need a long summer for some of the hybrids to ripen the wood properly. Now, where I am in Massachusetts, we have a shorter season, and there are a couple hybrids that don't fully lignify uh, before winter comes in, uh, such as the one next to this one, Ted's David Laverne, that one has some green wood. And what happens in winter if the wood is still a bit green is that it, it'll die back during extreme cold temperatures. Um, it'll die back to the most mature wood that is capable of withstanding that temperature. So uh, this is something that uh, is not commonly talked about with persimmon. When you have a, a cold hardy hybrid, uh, what you're going to be looking for is stuff that ripens its wood early, uh, has a deep dormancy, and ripens its fruit earlier than most. And uh, that will be a winner in your zone. Khakis in the north are not very feasible, especially at higher latitudes. Um, you'll see people advertising things like Tam Cam or Guang Yang saying that they are hardy into zone 6 and this is true at a lower latitude. Um, when you're up here some of the the wood doesn't ripen, if not most of it, and you get dieback and eventual death of the tree um, because of the lack of wood ripening and the lack of heat hours during summer. So when you see advertising for Guang Yang Tam Cam Ichikeki Jiro, Jiro, some of the others that are advertising their own cold hardiness. This is only true at lower latitudes, and I would say zone 6B at most. Now, Virginiana is the hardier of the two. It will go down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe a little more. Um, I know Buzz Fervor has been pushing the species uh, up in central Vermont to go into zone 4. So, it's the hardier of the two, and the hybrids get their cold hardiness from this species. So yeah, it, as long as you have 90 chromosome material, you're gonna be hardy into zone, through zone five, or most of it anyway, uh, with this particular type of persimmon. Now with khaki persimmons, this is Yamoto. The cold hardiness is anywhere from zero to negative five degrees Fahrenheit, depending. Um, uh, an important factor is the duration of the uh, cold event. So let's talk a little bit about that. Now some hybrid persimmons like uh, Zima Kerma here will take negative uh, 16 or a bit lower for long durations. Now an important factor in the cold hardiness of persimmon is the duration of the cold event. So uh, some hybrids are only hardy for short spells, others are hardier for longer periods. Um, my Nikitska Bordovaya died after about a week of sub-zero temperatures uh, a few years ago. However, it had survived moderate brushes with that same temperature or lower in years past. So this is another factor to consider. Now here in New England, we're not subject to the polar vortex as often as the Midwest. I'd call it a five to ten year event, um, and that is when the the polar vortex, which is dictated by the jet stream, kind of dips down. It tends to do that more over the Midwest. Uh, we get it sometimes, but not often. 
So just beware that maybe once every five to 10 years, you may have to go all out on protecting your, your trees just to get them through extreme cold events in winter. Now the simplest way to protect your young trees, this is a khaki. I believe it has negative 10 degrees hardiness, but I'm going to wrap it. So let me show you how to do that. So you put in a few poles and then you literally just wrap it with fabric, um, with like a teepee shape, with a wide base and the wide base captures ground heat. And you just wrap it like so. Maybe clip the top, put some rocks at the bottom, uh, that'll keep it from blowing away. But yeah, this is the most basic way to protect your young saplings if you don't want to deal with uh, buckets and rocks and things. Um, beware of uh, rats and other rodents. They like to burrow into this stuff. So check it periodically through winter or put some rodent killer on the inside. You can see this tree is safely wrapped up. Um, it's important to leave the top open uh, so that snow and other moisture can fall through. But the tree is otherwise protected from extreme desiccating winds. Uh, and the harshest of the climatic elements, and this will give it a better fighting chance.